Once upon a time, there was a miller who had three sons. When the miller died, he left them everything he owned. I am glad I own a mill. I will be a miller. The donkey is mine and he can work for me. The only thing that I own is this old cat. We have no home tools. What are we going to do? Then, to the younger son's surprise, the old cat began to talk. You have always been kind to me, so to us I said from now on, and I will make your fruitin, fruitin, get me a head of pail of fruit and a bag. The youngest son did as he was told. Here are boys, here is a head, some red boots, and a bag. Now I am Puss in Boots. Puss in Boots hurried off with the bag over his shoulder. At last, he stopped at a field and pulled up a carrot. I will put the bag down here on the ground with the carrot inside and hide behind this bush until a rabbit comes along. So a rabbit hopped in the bag and then Puss in Boots pulled the string tight. I will take a rabbit to the king. I know he likes a little rabbit stew. Oh, oh friend, who's in, who's in boots to the king's palace. This is present from my master, the Marquis of Carabas. I am very pleased with this present. I like rabbit stew. Thank, thank you, your master. Every day, Puss in Boots took more presents to the king. He said that they two were from his master. The Marquis of Carabas, Puss in Boots had a plan to make his master fortune. Go down to the river for a swim. If anyone talks to you, say you're you're um, are the Marquis of Carabas. I'm going to hide your clothes. No sooner had the youngest son waded into the water, when the king's coach say, "I came along." Help! Help! My master, the Marquis of Carabas is drowning, and his clothes have been torn. Stop the coach! Stop the coach! Save the young man in the river. Don't let him drown. The king's men went to save the youngest son from the water. Let tip some of my clothes from the box on the bed of the coat and help him dress. When the miller's son was dressed, he looked very fine indeed. Father, do ask the young man to ride with us. My, my girls, come and join us on our ride around my kingdom. The youngest son climbed into the coach and sat beside the beautiful princess. In the meantime, Pussy Boots had raced off ahead of the coach. Soon he came to some men who were cutting off corn in the field. When the king passes this way, tell him, tell him this cornfield and all this land belongs to the Marquis of Carabas. Yes, yes, we will do just as you say. A little while later, the king's coach came to the corn field and stopped. Who on this combill and all of this land? It all belongs to our master, the market of Galas. You own a lot of land. By now, Pussin Butch had reached a huge castle, which was the home of a Real giant. I have been told that you can turn yourself into an animal you wish. I can be a lion, just watch me. Rah! Puss and Boots tried not to show how frightened he was of the bellest lion. That is amazing! But could you turn yourself into a tiny mouse? That would be harder to do. This is not hard. I can do that. In a flash, the giant turned himself into a tiny mouse and scuttled across the floor. Good. Now I can catch him and eat, eat him up. Just as Puss and Boots was washing his paws, he heard the king's coach stopping at the castle door. Welcome to the room of my mother's <laughs> Marcus of Caravan. Yes, do come in and please stay for dinner. The king and the princess enjoyed the fun and wine. 
sir, do you let me marry your beautiful daughter? <laughs> <laughs> I'm delighted that you want to marry my daughter. The miller's youngest son and the princess were married the very next day, and they lived happily ever after with their cat, the clever Grusin <laughs> 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 Oh, father, you must be.